Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about designing your database. To start, we need to open up the database tab by clicking on this icon in the left toolbar. The first thing you need to know about your database is collections. So what are collections? Collections are the things that the users of your app can see and make. Another way to think about collections is the nouns of your app. So if you're describing your app like this trip planning one, where a user can see a list of trips and activities and plan them with friends, you can think about what are the nouns that you just mentioned in that description. So you can see that I mentioned trips and activities, and in fact, those are two of the collections we've got here. We've got three collections in this app, users, activities, and trips. Over here in this online ordering app, you can see I've also got three collections, but they're a little different. I still have users, but now I've got menu items and orders. Another way to think about what collections you might need is to think about the list that you might have on the screens in your app. So for example, on this home screen, if I want to have a list of trips, then I'm going to need a collection of trips. And over here on this trip detail screen, I've got a list of all the activities for a trip. Again, because I've got a list of activities, that means I'm going to need a collection of activities. For each collection, it holds the records. So for this trips collection, these three records are the three trips in my app's database. You can see here one for Egypt, one for Alaska, and one for Hawaii. Collections also have properties. You can see on this trips collection, for example, we've got properties for the name of the trip, the description, the image, and the price. And there's a button here where I can add other properties. When you click this, you can see the different types of properties you can add, whether it's a text property, number, true, false, or checkbox, dates and times, images, uh, or even files that you might want to attach. One way to think about the kind of properties you need is thinking about what is the information that you're going to display about the items in your collection. So for example, on this uh, trips list on my home screen, you can see that uh, there's a title spot and that's where I'm gonna want the trip's name to be. So I need to have a name property for my trip. On this trip details page, I've got a place for a trip image as well as a trip description. So those are gonna need to be properties as well. And then another way to think about properties, if the collections are the nouns in your app, then properties are more like the adjectives. They're the things that describe the nouns in your app. They describe the collection and add extra information so that users can know more about each record in your collection. Finally, the last thing to think about when designing your database is relationships. So a relationship is a special type of property. So for example, if I want to um, say that this uh, trip has a relationship to my activities collection, I can go in and click on activities and right now they just have a name, but I need to add one more relationship uh, property so that they're related to trips. So I can click on add property, then relationship, and then trips here. And when I do that, it's going to ask how are trips and activities related? You have three options. The first is the most common. It says a trip can have multiple activities and an activity belongs to one trip. That's exactly what we want. The next option is the reverse of that, where a trip can only have one activity, but activity can have multiple trips. Obviously, that doesn't make sense in this scenario. And then this next one is where an activity can have multiple trips and a trip can have multiple activities. But again, what we want for this example is the first one. So we'll click this. And now you can see that I've got a new property here under activities. The so activities now have name and then a link to the trip that they belong to. You can also see if I expand trips now, that there's automatically a property added for multiple activities that are part of that trip. Let me show you another example. If I click on add property on trips, let's say I want to add a relationship to my users and I want this to be uh, my travel party. So in this case, I'm going to choose actually the third option because a trip can have multiple users in the travel party and a user can have multiple trips. So if I select this third option, I can click done. And I can also change the name if I don't want this to say users, I can instead make it more specific to say travel party. And I can click save and I'm done. All right, I'm just gonna show one more example for relationships uh, and that is for ordering. So if we look at this um, ordering app, you can see that the orders has a property for name and the order total. I'm gonna add one more which is a relationship to the users because we want to know who the user was that made the order. And again, this first option is exactly what I want. Our user can have multiple orders and an order belongs to just one user. So I'll click this and say done. And now we're all set there. 
I can also add in one more property, which is a relationship to the menu items. So here I want to say that an order can have multiple menu items because people can add multiple things to their orders. But of course, menu items can be parts of multiple orders because multiple people can order a pizza or steak or beer or whatever it may be. So if we click on this and click done, now we can see an order now has a name, the order total, the user that made the order, and the menu items that are a part of it. Okay, so that's what you need to know about designing your database. We've got collections here, as well as the properties within each collection, and then finally thinking about how the relationships work.